All right, today we got a new battery from Orient Power. Let's open it up. We have our manual and our M8 terminal bolts. All right, and there's the battery. It is a lithium iron phosphate 12 volt, 230 amp hour battery. It's in this metal container. That's very nice. I like that. Has some recessed handles right here. Looks like we've got a power switch and our positive negative terminals right here at the top. These little plastic covers. Okay, and according to the manual, it has a recommended charge of 50 amps, a maximum charge at 200 amps, and we have a maximum continuous discharge at 200 amps. That's really good. Uh, looks like we can do uh, four in parallel and four in series. And uh, it's showing here a link to an app, so this is clearly, all right, this has a smart BMS. So very nice. And it has a little wiring diagram here for the BMS. So that might come in handy. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing charged up. So while this is charging up, let's check out their app. And I noticed there is a number here on the side, A60221. And I bet that's going to match something here. Yep, there it is. All right, so it shows we're at 94% state of charge, shows our voltage, shows our current, so we're doing 42.69 amps, shows our charge and discharge is on, and this is an EEBMS, so when I went to find this app in the app store, I typed in EE-BMS. And uh, there's a detail, so we got to enter a password. I think it says here. Uh, oh, okay. So it's six 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 six. All right, there we go. Now we've got individual cell voltages, uh, data manufacturer. Uh, it says real capacity is 234 amp hours. And there's a settings, and there's a password needed there. I wonder if it's the same. Nope, it's a different password. So it's probably going to be like a manufacturer password. <laughs> yeah, they don't give you that one, apparently. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so we'll just let it keep charging up. All right, so the battery is fully charged. We're gonna do a capacity test. We've got it all hooked up here. So let's go ahead and start the test. Inverter's on. Got the heater down here for the load. And we are pulling 53.8 amps, 727 watts. We'll let it continue on and I'll be back when it's complete. All right, we are down to 2% and on their app, it's showing 3%. Let's look at the cell voltages. All right, so we've got, 
Eh, basically about 2.9 volts across the board there on the cell voltages. All right, now we're down to 1%. 227.9, well, 228 amp hours now. So we're getting real close. Okay, we basically have one amp hour to go. There it comes. Bam, 230 amp hours. 2,952 watt hours. So as of right now, it's passed its capacity test. Obviously, we'll let it keep on running. Oh, and now the inverter starts complaining. That's usually where I turn it off. It actually probably would go a little bit more. But there you go. 230.45 amp hours, 2,957 watt hours. All right, so let's open this thing up and see what's on the inside. We have screws all around the edge here, and we're gonna remove those now. All right, so we got all the screws removed. Let's take a peek. Oh, wow. That is a classy unit. Wow. That's a good build quality, guys. So we've got two gauge silicone jacketed wire on the negative and the same thing on the positive. The terminals are protected here on the bottom. I like that. We got a nice chunky BMS here and uh, a nice bus bar that goes down to the cells. The cells are prismatic. Uh, this looks very, very high quality. Let's see what the BMS says here. So the BMS says Orient Power 4S 200 amp BMS. It says charging 200 amps, discharging 200 amps. Uh, looks like it was manufactured in 2023. Yeah, so that's very nice. Uh, everything's like very well built and very well put together. All the metal and all the brackets are all designed to work together here. I see the, the little Bluetooth dongle here. So I say let's try to remove this BMS and see if we can get a better look at the top of the cells. I think I got the screws and everything out of the way. Let's try to lift it up. Okay, so we've got the BMS lifted up. It's still connected by a bunch of wires. But I do see, looks like one, two, three, and I think maybe four thermal sensors. And there's the top of the cells. Looks like we've got to take this bar out of the way to see the QR codes. All right, so I moved this retaining bar over I took the screws out and I was able to slide it over I got access to the QR codes the QR codes are fresh and intact nothing funky going on there and I actually just scanned it and check it out these are EVE cells LF 230s so awesome that's very high quality guys um, I'm very impressed with this this battery is solid uh, I love this metal case. I love the quality of what's going on here. We've got nice bolted bus bars. It's not the laser welded stuff that we see in the, the less expensive batteries. Uh, this, is, this is fantastic. You could actually take this battery all apart. It's serviceable. You could remove a cell. You could replace a cell. Uh, so now let's try to put it to, back together enough to where we can test freezing up these 
thermal probes and see if we got low temperature protection. Okay, so we are now charging at 43 amps. You can hear the charger running. I routed one of those thermal probes up here so I could get it with the duster. And let's try it. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> so we do have low temperature protection. Our current is gone down to zero. Uh, the charger's off. Let's see if it'll come back. Might have to restart the charge here. There we go. And we're back in business. We are charging again at 43 amps. So awesome. I'm going to put this thing back together and we're going to do some more tests. All right, so what I want to do right now is I want to push that 200 amp continuous discharge that it says this thing can do. So I've got two 1500 watt inverters hooked up. I've got two heaters. So let's turn these on and see what we get. And I've also got a fan over here in case we need to kind of fine tune. And I've got their app pulled up here so we can see how much current we're pulling. So let's turn on the inverters. Alright, so right now we're pulling 55, and that's because I've only got one of these heaters on. Let's turn this other one on. Alright, so I think both of them are on. Alright, looks like we're doing 185 watts. I don't think I can adjust the heaters without going over that, so let's hook up the fan. Let's turn it on low. All right, so we've got 195. Let's try medium. On the fan. Oh yeah. 197. I think that's about as close as I can get it without potentially going over. So I want to let that run. I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. We're at 9, 9.31 right now. I'll come back in 10 minutes and uh, see if it's still running. All right, it is now 9.40. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's 9.40. And we're still going. We're still cranking 196, 195 amps. No problem. So I think this thing can do what they're saying. Now let's, let's try to push it <laughs> over the edge. Let's turn the fan up. On high, I think. Oh, look, that's 199. A 198. I just saw 199. Let's turn the fan all the way off. That gets us down to 182. And let's turn this heater on medium because it's on low right now. Oh, no, that went over the edge. Yeah, I just saw 208. Okay. So, yeah, you can't go over 200. It turns off. But right at, you know, right at 200, it's perfectly fine. So, awesome. All right, guys. So, as I was testing this battery, I noticed that the Bluetooth range seemed to be pretty limited. So, let's test that right now. Let's try at two foot. All right, we see it down here in the list. So let's connect at two foot. All 
All right, we did connect. So let's come out to about five feet. So there we go, there's five feet right there. I'm not actually even seeing it in the list at five feet. <laughs> All right, let's move up to four foot. So here's our four foot mark. Still not seeing it in the list. Let's try three foot. <laughs> so here's our three foot mark. Not even seeing it in the list at three foot. All right, let's go back to our two foot mark that we were able to do earlier. And yep, it's right there. So yeah, about two foot is the range I'm getting, which is not much for the Bluetooth. So that's definitely something that you're gonna to need to consider um, if you're going to be right up on the battery to connect to it, you're fine. But if this is, you know, if you're trying to connect to it from inside an RV, uh, you may not. So definitely consider that. I'm wondering if it's this metal housing that's just blocking the signal. I'm curious about opening this up and seeing if we get better signal. All right, so I got the uh, battery opened up. Let's try the five foot mark again. All right, here's our five foot mark. And there it is. So we do get signal here with the lid open. Yep, so five foot. Let's try even further. Well, my tape fell off the table, but this is about 10 foot. So let's try that. Yep, there it is. So we get 10 foot. We, we found it, but I don't think, oh, there it is. So we did connect at 10 foot. Yep, so definitely something to consider, uh, but this seems like the metal is probably blocking the signal, so two foot with the battery stock and closed up and uh, 10 foot with it opened. I know that probably doesn't help out because I doubt any of you are planning to really open these things. All right, and lastly, let's get a weight on this. And we have come in at 54.2 pounds. All right, so I think that's going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down there in the comments what you think about this battery. I'll leave some links in the description, and I'll catch you on the next one.